Hi everyone, it's Claire here today with the first of my video tutorials for Casual Friday Stamps. Today we're going to make two small 3x3 cards using some fairly minimal supplies and a stamp set and a small die from Casual Friday Stamps. We're going to start with a 3x3 card base, a sheet of 6x6 paper, our heartboard die and our monomy stamp set. First, we're going to cut down the 6x6 sheet to two sections of 3x6. Fold one of those in half and you've got your second card base. Set that aside, pick up the other card base and put the heart die in place on the right hand side. What we're going to do is we're going to slightly overhang that so that our heart is at the edge. If you need to kind of line it up, there's some little holes that you obviously use to poke the die cut out once you've cut it. Um, you can line those up and you'll make sure that you've got a perfectly straight edge. I like to hold my dies in place with a little bit of washi so that it doesn't move when I shift it through the die cut machine. Remove all of the little hearts from the back of the die. If they're stuck in there, just poke them out with a needle um, and then set those to one side for a few moments. What we're going to do now is put some of the extra patterned paper from our 6x6 sheet at the back of the card, just to create a patterned area on the front. Make sure that when you're gluing this into place, you get the glue right to the edges of the die cut shape so that it doesn't lift when you've put the card together. Set that aside for a little while just to dry um, and to make sure that all of the edges are stuck down while we work on the second card. Take the largest of the heart shapes and place it onto the front of the patterned card. You can use the other card as a kind of template to make sure that you've got this in the right place. Line up the straight edges with the straight edge of the card too if that helps. I'm going to stick this into place now using one of my two-way glue pens. I think this one that I'm using is the, the one from the Zig Memory System. Um, so it remains liftable for a few seconds and you can make sure that it gets into the right place. It's also clear when it sets, so if you do need to move the shapes around a little bit to make sure that they're lined up properly, you won't see it once it dries. Once you've got the large heart in place, take the alternating hearts from the die cut set and add them to the centre. Line them up carefully so that they're equally spaced and then set the card aside while we work on the second card base. If you haven't done this already, the next thing that you want to do is trim off the excess pattern paper from the card base before we start adding the hearts to this particular card. We're going to do exactly the same thing now um, to create the second card, taking our remaining heart dies and adding them to the front of the card base to create an alternating pattern. At this stage, just make sure that everything's stuck down really well and that nothing should lift from the front of the card. If you need to, set them aside inside a book or with something on top of them, just to make sure that all of these elements are secure. For the next part of the card, we're going to use two sentiments from the beautiful Mono Mini stamp set from Casual Friday Stamps. This stamp set has a coordinating die set too, which is used to cut out the floral elements of the stamp set. So if you're a bit like me and you're not very good at fussy cutting, I definitely recommend that you get the die set as well. I'm going to emboss my sentiments so that they stand out against the busy pattern that I've used for my cards. So I'm stamping those on to a couple of strips of vellum using some clear embossing ink and a shiny silvery look embossing powder that I've got from the English Stamp Company. It's really awesome, as well as it's kind of raised emboss look. It also has a little bit of a glittery look to it, so I really like it. And of course, it's kind of gender neutral, so it works with both of these monomy sentiments really well. You'll see that once again, I'm using a couple of little bits of washi just to hold my vellum strips in place. And that's just so that I can make sure that my sentiment is kind of in the middle of the strips that I'm using. Obviously, if you were using a bigger sheet of vellum, it wouldn't matter so much because you could cut the sentiment to size and shape and make sure that your sentiment was central. But I like to use all the little bits of 
leftovers um, that are sat around on my desk and make sure that I make the most of my materials. You'll hear that kind of thing from me fairly often. I keep everything. I'm not normally a crafting hoarder, but I don't like to throw little bits of paper or vellum away because, you know, you never know when you might need them. Is anyone else a little bit of a craft leftover hoarder? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know that it's not just me. I'm going to set the embossing powder with my heat tool. I like to use kind of the, the mid heat for vellum. Uh, it, it, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm not really sure about whether the vellum would stand up to the full on heat that I, my heat gun produces. So if you are using a thinner sheet of vellum, just make sure that you set the heat to a lower temperature. Once the embossing's finished, we're going to add the sentiments to the front of our card. I'm using a tape runner from Crafter's Companion, which I have found to be fantastic for adding vellum to my projects because it doesn't show through the vellum itself. It's a really nice way of making sure that you don't have to add anything on top of the vellum and that it doesn't lose its transparency. So I fully recommend this product. It's taken me ages to find it. Um, but if you can get hold of it where you are, definitely give it a go. Once I've got the vellum sheets on, just to finish off, I'm adding a couple of shiny sequins because, you know, what project is finished until you've added some kind of shiny element to the front of it? Just using, again, um, one of my two-way glue pens. And that's it. All done. You've got two cards there in probably less time than it's taken me to do the voiceover for this video because I fluff it a lot. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure that you do stop by the Casual Fridays blog so that you can see some of the other makes and tutorials created by the Ink Squad design team. I'll leave a link to the blog in the description box below, along with my personal design team discount code that you can use on any of the products in store. I hope to see you soon. Bye.